Hey guys and welcome and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Naja and I make college or lifestyle related content. And today I will be talking all about how I got into top universities with a very low SAT score. In my opinion, it was lower than like most of the averages to the schools that I apply to. And if you're interested in seeing how I got into Stanford, my stats, my ECs, all of that, I have a very specific and in-depth detailed video on my channel from a year ago, so go ahead and check that out. I will link it up here. And I also have the truth about admissions, and I have read my admissions file and found out how I actually got into Stanford and what my readers had to say about me. So you can also check out that video on my channel above. And today I'm going to be talking about how I got into these universities with a low SAT score because I always get a lot of questions like how did you get in with your if your SAT score was so low I'm worried about my SAT score like my score is lower than the averages everybody's better than me and I'm just here to tell you all the truth about admissions and what I learned from my whole college application experience from reading my application and just seeing that SAT scores don't really matter and I'm not going to be talking about my other scores in this video. I'm not going to be talking about any of my other stats. I'm solely going to focus on SAT scores because I get that question all the time. But this knowledge can be applied to test scores, GPA, and numbers in general. So I'm going to go into depth about numbers in your application and just how much they mean, if they really mean a lot, if they really like push you in or like shut you out. And so that's what today's video is going to be about. Just a quick disclaimer before we get into the video. I'm obviously not an admissions officer. I don't know what actually got me in. I don't actually know for a fact what they think about my SAT score like I really don't know any of that but I'm just gonna tell you guys what I figure and what I've learned over this past year of like being in college getting into college talking to other admits watching YouTube videos everything that I've learned so if you're interested in learning how I got in my schools with a low SAT and how you might be able to do the same keep watching make sure to like comment and subscribe and follow me on Instagram if you have any questions and don't forget to click that notification bell to get notified every time I post so let's just get right into this video so first let me tell you guys what two scores I made on my SAT. So I pulled up my College Board account and I'm gonna tell you guys the SAT and the SAT subject test that I had to submit to nearly all of my colleges and I'll get into that in a second. Now I took the SAT in December of 2017 and I got a 1240. A 640 on evidence-based reading and writing and a 590 on math. So I took the SAT again in August 2018 and that was a 1340 and I got a 750 on evidence-based reading and writing and a 590 on math. So as you can see from those two scores my math is literally horrible. I did not prep very well like I didn't prep at all for the 1340 and I got a 590 on math both times. So as you can see I suck at math. Math is the worst subject in the world to me. But I did pretty good on reading. I got a 750 and I think they're both out of 800. So I did good on reading. I just don't do good on math and that's why my score was so low. But if you were wondering for context about the average scores of like Stanford or USC, the schools that I get into, the average math scores for admitted Stanford students would be a 770 and the 25th percentile is a 740. So I had a 590 both times and the average was a 740 to a 770. I was lower than the 25th percentile. And for reading, I did better. So the average was like a 735 and the 25th percentile was a 700. So I did good on reading, but my math score was just literally horrible. Like it was nowhere, it was not even a 600. And I still got in. And their composite was a 1500 or 1440 is 25th percentile. And I was at a 1340. As you can see, I was 100 points lower than the 25th percentile. And then I took two subject tests on May 5th, 2018, and I got a 600 on U.S. History and a 610 on Biology. So as you guys can see, I just had the, a very low score compared to the averages. Like, it's of course, it's like a, it's not a bad score. It's a 1340. Like, it's better than a 1240 that I had before. But usually you want to aim for like a 1400 and above to be considered competitive. But I was just like... I can't take the test anymore. As you can see, it was not anywhere close to the averages of the schools that I was applying to. People were getting like 700s and 700s on each one and getting 1400 and above, and that was just not me. I had to submit every single one of these scores from the 1240 to the 600 to the 610 to the 1340 all of my SAT scores to mostly all of the colleges that I applied to and this is because I used QuestBridge and QuestBridge if you're unaware is a program for it's like a scholarship program for low-income first-generation minority etc students um, and you guys should go check that out I also have a video on that on my channel I'll post an updated one soon maybe over the summer when I was applying to QuestBridge it was required that we put all of our test scores on the application so I had to put all of my history of test scores I had to connect my college board account I had to like do my 1240, do my 600, do my 1340. All the schools I applied to on QuestBridge saw every single score that I had ever taken. So they saw every single SAT score. And I just 
knew I was like I'm so sure I'm not gonna get into any of these schools they can see how bad I am at testing I just thought testing was like the biggest part of my application I was like they don't want somebody who has a 1240 and a 1340 when they have these other kids who have 1500s and 4.0s and stuff and I was just comparing myself and I was like I am not about to get into these schools when I used my common app and I applied to places like Georgia Tech and Johns Hopkins I did not put the SAT well I put the 1340 but I didn't put the 1240 or the subject scores because those were just horrible I'm just rambling on but what I'm trying to say is that they really don't mean as much as you think they mean that SAT score does not have as much of a bearing as you think it does especially now as a result of the coronavirus COVID-19 that's currently going on and we're in quarantine and stuff you people cannot take tests they can't go for their SAT testing they can't go for ACT so a lot of schools are making testing optional and some schools are just removing like the requirement all together so you guys will not really have to worry about it that much especially if you're the class of 2025 about to start this college application process you really don't have to worry about testing too much which means you really 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 need to strengthen the other parts of your application and so now I'm gonna get into the tips part of this video and tell you guys what I think got me into these schools and what I think is a good recipe for an application so I came up with a little acronym called PPT PPT and this is what I think is a recipe for a good application so it stands for passion person personality and theme. So I'm going to break each of these down and tell you guys how I implemented them in my application and how you might be able to do the same with yours. So first, passion. I think it's really important to show your passions throughout your application. So for one, you need to have like similar things that you've done, your extracurriculars, maybe your essays are about this, but just show that you're passionate about something. It doesn't have to be one thing, but it can be multiple things that you're passionate about. Maybe you're into activism, maybe you're into, you're into mental health, maybe you're into environmental concerns, maybe you're into to, like anti-bullying maybe you're just into art or dance or anything like may it, whatever it is just so that you're really passionate about it because that's what colleges like to see especially if this passion is something that you then want to major in isn't it something that you can bring to the campus contribute to that campus community and I think it's really good to have a passion throughout your application so my passion um, was one mental health advocacy and also art so I kind of weaved all of that into my essays my extracurriculars and I think it's also important to have a little bit of leadership sprinkled in there to show that you're involved and passionate about what you're involved in so two is personality so PPT passion personality and by personality I mean literally your personality like people don't want to read a boring application they literally read thousands of applications a day and when they get to yours they don't want to see stuff that they can see throughout the application you don't want to talk about your GPA you don't want to talk about your test scores you want to talk about a story you want to make them laugh you want to make them feel a way you just want to make them feel something for you and want to advocate for you to get into that school really try to show your personality you don't want to have a boring application you want to show them that you are a real person you're not just numbers and words on a page you're a real person who has real experiences and real stories to tell and something to contribute to that campus you also don't want to just reiterate things that are in your application like yes they know you were the leader of this club and yes they know you have a 4.0 yes they know you took that SAT then but they also want to know what did you do in that club that was so impactful what did you learn from this class? How was your childhood? Like things like that. Like they want to know about you as a person and not just you as a student. So make sure to show that personality. Don't worry if you don't make them laugh. Don't worry if you don't make them feel any way. Just make sure it's an interesting application. That's how I felt. I was like, I'm not a funny person. Like I can't really make my admissions readers laugh. I'm not really quirky. Like I don't have like some kind of hook to me. I just told the truth about my life, my experiences, my childhood how I grew up, like literally everything. I just laid it all out on the table and I was like, this is me. And if they accepted me, they accepted me and I fit into their campus community. If not, I was gonna find somewhere for me. So I thought it was okay anyway. And I just put it all out there. And that's what I think is important. Just make sure to show that personality and show you're passionate about something. And last is theme. You might hear a lot of people saying that you need a spike or you should just be really good at one thing in your application. Everything else can be kind of like subpar or just like average but I don't necessarily agree with that I think you can have your spike and you can have other things that you're good at you're involved in but I also think it's important to you for to have an overarching theme to your application so you can have that one thing that you may be really good at you're really passionate about but I think you should stretch that to fit like other aspects of your life like I was interested in mental health even though I wasn't involved in a lot of clubs in mental health I tied that to my childhood I tied it to my like creative essays 
is like I just tied it throughout my application I said that's what I want to do in the future that was my goals after graduation like I tied mental health throughout my application and I also weaved in art in there so I think it's really important to have that theme to make sure that they have a central idea about what you want to do what you're passionate about and that will really show through in your application so like I said passion personality and theme and this is, of course is not like the perfect recipe like you're not gonna get in right away if you do all those things but I think it's important to show that you're a well-rounded person you're not that on a paper you're more than that so those are the three little acronyms that I live by and when people ask me for advice that's what I say but like I said before SAT and ACT scores and like subject tests and stuff are started to be less regarded like they're not they don't matter as much um and schools are trying to make them optional like i said so you really don't have anything to worry about but this also means if you have those good test scores you need to make sure that your other application is just as good as all those test scores like you don't want to have great test scores and then be a boring like mundane like not a good personality you don't want to do that you want to make sure to have those good gpa good test scores and a good personality but if you don't have those high test scores it's definitely okay i obviously didn't have the high sat score and i still had to submit that 1240 to that school but i did make up for it i think in my essays and my extracurriculars and if you guys want to read my essays they're always linked in my description or in my instagram bio i will also be reading them aloud in an upcoming video a lot of you guys have been requesting me to do that so i'll do that soon so be on the lookout for that but just to summarize this whole video just make sure to have a well-rounded application you're not a test score you're not a gpa you're not a number on a page you're a person who has experiences who has a story to tell who really needs to get their personality, their passions across through a theme in their application. I hope this helped you out. This is a very quick video. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and follow me on Instagram if you have any questions. But don't be afraid to ask me anything in the comments below. Comment your opinions on this, any tips you might have for other students. And thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys on Wednesday.